In the previous video, we talked about what reactive programming means in a theoretical way. Now we're going to get very concrete and build a simple reactive programming system, then build a demo so we can watch it in action. The roots of formalized reactive programming are in statically typed languages, particularly C sharp. That's of little concern to us as users of a language based around inherent typing, but it does mean that the standard presentation of these of these ideas is heavily intertwined with types, templates, interfaces, and anonymous functions. To make it easier to transition from this presentation to the other documentation and discussions available on the web, we'll be a little less Pythonic here, and perhaps a little more c sharpish That said, on to the coding. Arguably, the single most fundamental element of a reactive programming system is the observer interface. The definition of how we can notify an object that the next item in a sequence, item in a sequence, its watching is available. What we've got here is an abstract base class, the closest Python equivalent to a C sharp interface. Our observer class doesn't define any functionality at all, just method names and signatures, and guarantees that classes, which inherit from it, will have to implement at least the on event method. For complete functionality, they'd have to implement on exception and on complete as well, but that's not required. So the intent is that an observer will have its own event, have its on event method called once for each element of the sequence, followed by its on complete method if the sequence terminates while the observer is watching it. If something goes sideways, the on exception method would be called instead. For an observer to be useful, there must also be an observable. So here we see the beginning of that class. Like observer, observable is an abstract base class. Although in this case, we provide meaningful default implementations of all of its functionality. The subscribe method, which we're looking at right now, is how an observer connects to the observable, registering itself as a consumer of the events that the observable emits. All right, so how do we actually emit events? These three methods, one for sending normal events, one for sending exceptions, and one for sending the this sequence has ended event take care of that. In each case, they do a bit of error checking, then loop through the registered observers and invoke the appropriate method. These methods have names prefixed with a single underscore, marking them as not part of the observable class's public interface. They're helpers to make subclasses easier to write. That can't possibly be a complete reactive programming system, can it? Yes and no. It is fundamentally complete, but it's lacking a great many refinements. And in no way is it ready for a production environment. It will serve nicely as the spine for our demo program, though. So let's move on to that. For our demo, we're going to make a program that prints messages, loosely representing the sounds we might hear in a zoo. The animals will be represented as observables. Emitting events, representing sounds at random intervals. We'll use merging and mapping to combine and modify the event sequences before finally printing out the resulting sequence. So first of all, we have our animal class, which is an observable, and the event animal event helper class. The animal class contains some basic information and a coroutine, which will run asynchronously and occasionally send events to the animal's observers. Looking at the code here, we could see that an animal is effectively a sequence of noise events, then a die event immediately followed by the completion of the sequence. We want some of our animals to be capable of creating loud noises. Instead of adding that capability to the animal class, we'll create a mapping over the sequence of events, which replaces randomly selected noise events with, lo with loud noise events. This mapping is both an observer, so that it can subscribe to the sequence of events and an observable. Because the sequence of modified events is still a sequence of events, and not much use if another observable can't subscribe to it. This is fundamentally what happens in any reactive programming system when we apply an operator to an observable sequence to create a new observable sequence. However, in almost every case, a real reactive system provides us with a quicker, easier, and usually more, usually more efficient way of doing it. It's rare indeed 
to actually create a class that's both observer and observable for ourselves. There's one more place we need before we start putting things together, and that's a way to display a stream of animal events. Another observer is the, obvi is the obvious choice, choice for that, and it turns out to be quite easy. All we need is a constructor and an appropriate on event method. Now that we've got all the pieces, how do we put them together to achieve our goal? Well, first, we make our animal objects, and then use the sometimes loud and output classes to create our modified composite sequence and display it. Then, we need to schedule the run methods of each animal for asynchronous execution via a sync IO, which happens implicitly here when pass them when we pass them as parameters to gather. Our main.py file actually runs the async IO event loop. So now we just sit back and watch the pseudo cacophony of our imaginary zoo. Did you notice how the meat of our program is boiled down to a single line of code? Sure, we have a whole file devoted to framework, but that's reusable. We also have the sometimes loud and output classes, but the only reason they're here is so we can see exactly what happens at each step of this program. In a real system, output and sometimes loud would have used built-in functionality that mapped a function on the sequence. As we'll see in the next video, all of which leaves us with a single line of code that composites several observable sequences and transformations and defines most of the behavior of the program. That one line demonstrates the power of reactive programming. In this video, we implemented and used a basic reactive programming framework. In the next video, we'll take a look at a fully-fledged reactive programming framework called RxPy.